In the interest of time, I would maybe suggest to have a few short questions for our first two speakers at this point, uh, maybe some clarification questions, and then we break for coffee and tea for a half hour, and then we'll continue with the second half of our session where there's also an opportunity for uh, more debate also between the speakers and also between you and the speakers. Um, could I invite Natasha back on stage as well? And then maybe there are some people who have some questions already at this stage. Oh, I feel like we're doing mug shots. <laughs> it's my brother. <laughs> okay, so this is for Anders. And it's not really a question, it's more an, an opportunity. I just wanted to mention, because you had mentioned keep all of your emails and things like that. So the old mind uploading research group emails from the late 1990s, I copied that whole server down and I keep on copying it every time I copy my account. So we have that, just in case. That's wonderful. Yeah, hey, Randall. All right. Yeah, uh, I think that's wonderful. And archiving things matter. Uh, the French salons that create the enlightenment uh, we remember mostly through the things people wrote afterwards. Well, probably a good idea that we didn't get a proper transcript of what was actually conspired. But that output changed the world. And I think some of our old mailing lists uh, are going to change the world too. You know, what's interesting, and I'm so glad you said that, Randall, is that Andrew said, you know, we didn't have such great recording back then. And that's really true. However, I have in my closet tapes going back to the first uh, meetings back in the early 1990s, the Extropy conferences, the WTA conferences, the Transvision, I have all that footage, plus Hal Finney. Everyone know who Hal Finney is? You know what Bitcoin is, right? Bitcoin? Okay. <laughs> I see blank faces. Well, Hal Finney is one of the first Bitcoin um, users, uh, spokesperson, um, and He's often credited with having founded Bitcoin. He was a, a part of our group early on in the 1990s. So we have all that, and there's been film companies trying to get it from us. And I'm saying, no, my husband is going here. Yeah, we've got all that. I said, no, 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 this is too good. So I hope that someone who's a better artist than me can come up with an idea for us. Great talks, both of you. My question is about Anders, your slide, that uh, transhumanists are now the parents and there are many other organizations which in some ways are having a bigger impact on the world. So to both of you, what do you think is the unique thing that transhumanism still offers that these other children organizations lose sight of sometimes and that transhumanists need to remind people is an important part of the vision? I think it's a little bit like the relationship between the philosophy department and the other departments at the university. Uh, philosophers deal with stuff we don't know really how to deal with, uh, but once we figure it out, it becomes its own department, and then everybody wants, what's the use of the philosophers? I think we are a bit like that. I think we are working on stuff that haven't yet gotten quite shape about the good long-term future. When you figure out that, oh yes, the long term is really important, then you get long termism. Oh, and the cryptocurrencies might be important, then you get the crypto people. Uh, when you get, oh, helping people is important in ways, you get the here. I think that is our role. We, we, our job is to be that source, that stem cell, so to say, for future ideas. Uh, yeah, the, the DNA of ideas is, is historical going back. I mean, you think about the Taoists, Aristotle, Socrates, way, way, way back. There's so much to be garnered. Um, but if Anders is the, who did you say you were? You were the old guy with the beard? F-U-C-K, that makes me the, the, the ancient great-great-grandmother. So, uh, <clears throat> um, yeah, David, that's such a great question. You know, what I, what I would like for them to is to pay homage to ask questions. I mean, when you get older, you're often forgotten, and that goes not only for people, but for organizations. I would really love them to remember the work that was done and the early ideas and 
And you know, I was thinking about it last night. You know, we, we talk about artificial intelligence. Well, there was Marvin Minsky. He was in our group. Okay, then artificial general intelligence. Well, that's Peter Voss and Sean Alleg and um, Ben Gertzel. They were part of our group. Nanotechnology, Eric Drexler. I mean, you, you know, did anyone read about, was it Judith Campisci this morning? Okay. Well, Judith Campisci and uh, Cynthia Kenyon were part of them. These are brilliant scientists. Um, again, Bitcoin, encryption, Ralph Merkel, the Merkel tree is the foundation for cryptocurrency Bitcoin. I mean, we were all together in the early 90s, and it was really wonderful. And I just think it's great to invite the older people and the older organizations to have some space. And also, of course, it's up to us young ones to try to beat them and being even cooler, come up with even bigger ideas. Well, I don't, how big can I get? Okay, no. That's a good question. Yeah. How many ideas well, can you get? Uh, Bucky Fuller, the geodesic dome, that was pretty nice. Yeah. 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 I, I think that's actually good for the coffee question. <laughs> hey, good morning. Uh, my name is Paul Epping. Um, I was one of the first people who went to the Singularity University and what was talking and had deep discussions with um, Aubrey de Grey, you know him. And what I'm puzzling since is that aging is a disease. That means reasoning through that at the moment that we were born, we are aging and we are ill. How does that work? What is it? Why is it in the bucket of illness, disease? Does that really promote transhumanism? Uh, I think it's pretty obvious that <coughs> The point of transhumanism is to question the human condition and figure out where can we fix it. And I think aging is a pretty obvious thing that needs to be fixed. And you might argue that maybe it's more about longevity than just completely getting rid of aging, etc. But that's minor quibbles. It's pretty clear that this is a horrible problem and it needs to be fixed. And it's also a horrible problem that people take for granted, just like we took a lot of moral disaster for granted, like sexism and slavery for a long time. And didn't regard them as a society as a big problem. Now we realize, oh, that's horrible, and it went on for generation after generation. There is a very real chance that the future is going to say, what took you so long to fix the obvious thing? Oh. Yeah, it's interesting that you said that. I was early there. I was one of the um, faculty at the Singularity University at its inception. And um, I was in the human enhancement department. And we were working on longevity and talking about prosthetics and uh, ways to look at uh, if you go into chronics and you're, you're revived, what type of body would you have? Can we grow new bodies? Uh, what are the limits there? It got a little conservative, and so I am no longer there. But um, I think they're coming back out of that conservative perspective, looking now at longevity. It's interesting that you should mention, I was just in Vogue magazine uh, with the quote, long, um, aging is a disease. And that's where the mainstream, went when, in, when I was speaking, we need to deal with the, the concerns and problems, yes, but we also need to be more mainstream. It's good for any of us, if you're interviewed in any type of these mainstream magazines and or doing your work, just put these words out there, just that phrase, aging is a disease. I mean, there'll be some you know, backlash from it, but truly, it's an easy phrase to say. Thank you for that. Um, DJ, would you like to respond to that? Okay, well, um, with an eye on the clock, maybe this is a good moment to take a break. But you'll have a chance to ask further questions to the speakers in the second half of the session. Thank you very much. Thank you.